Nations used to be, actually the name is the United Nations Organization. But now we are very shocked. We say UN, you know, we don't use UNO. And, you know, and my father used to always say, oh, there's this UNO, one day it will come, come and help us. And I never thought too much about that. And, you know, and uh, fast forward to about 30 years later, I was a graduate student at, at uh, Indiana University in South Africa. And the professor, they had a program similar to yours, except yours, you bring the ambassadors here. That one, they used to raise money and take students to the UN. So, you know, we graduate students and the professor said, we're going to the United Nations. I suddenly remembered, oh, my father used to talk about this, you know, look at that. And we're 25 journalists from around the world. And so the professor had each one of us write to our ambassadors in the UN to say, we're coming as a class and, you know, could we sit with them in the well of the United Nations behind the name plates and, you know, maybe they can take us around and show us. My predecessor, the man who, who I, rep not the one I directly replaced in this place, but the, the former South African permanent representative in 1973 wrote a letter back to me, to my professor, and said, I don't want him, he's black, I'm the South African ambassador to the UN, I represent white South Africans, I don't represent any black people. Well, but the, the, the date was set for the class to go. The professor said, well, you can stay behind on campus or you can come along with us. And uh, said, no, I want to come along with you. So we went to the UN. All my colleagues sat in the, in the, behind the benches there with all the, um, the ambassadors. I sat in the public gallery, you know, not even the first one, you know, you know the peanut gallery where you get a nosebleed up there. <laughs> and, you know, I sat there all day from that end because the representative of South Africa didn't even want to associate with me. And, you know, and of course I was sad and, you know, out of 25 students, I'm the only one sitting there. But, you know, I said, no, that's fine. The professor managed to find a way to get me to go to the, 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 the fourth floor for lunch. At least I got lunch. And I never thought about it. And this was 73. And, and you know, fast forward again. You know, time is a very interesting thing, you know, because it's like life repeats. It just repeats with different details, you know. It just repeats. You know, think about it. You know, these things just show up. You know, yeah, it's the same thing. Different details, maybe different people. Fast forward again into the 90s. I think it was 98 or 99. Nelson Mandela, as president, was coming to the United Nations. And the, but this is before I became ambassador in 98. They said, oh, you know, officials will have to accompany him. They said, you have to accompany him as well. So I accompany Nelson Mandela. I've forgotten what happened in 73. There's so much life has happened since then. And, you know, we get to the United Nations, and of course Nelson Mandela, when we worked with him, he always made us feel larger than life. I mean, he's an amazing human being to be around. And, you know, he always made us, made us feel more important than him. The only problem we had with him, two problems we had with President Mandela, one was to keep away children. It doesn't matter how late you are. If he sees children, he gets out of schedule and says, oh, he goes and talks to children. <laughs> So we always try to find roads where there are not children, so the president <laughs> could be on time. And the other thing is that once he, he feels relaxed with people, he doesn't want to leave. And, you know, we are the timekeepers. Mr. President, we have a next appointment. And, you know, so, but we get to the United Nations with Nelson Mandela. And we sit, and of course the whole UN stands up in chairs. And, you know, suddenly we're standing up cheering. And I'm saying to myself, why are tears coming to my eyes. You know what? I look around because the peanut gallery is full of people. And I remember in 73, I was out there. <laughs> and you know, and today I'm down here. So I'm saying that to you to say, you know, don't despair in life. Don't think when things are not going right. That's, that too shall pass because life repeats, but it repeats with beautiful new details and beautiful new people. And then, of course, you know, we go and back, and wow, I forget about this. In 99, the foreign minister called me and says, well, you know, President Mandela wants to see you. I said, well, what did I do? And I says, well, he wants you to go to New York as the ambassador of South Africa. 
I said, no, minister, I can't go back to New York. I lived in the United States for 20 years, and I'm so happy to be back home. I just bought a house. And, you know, he says, you go tell him. I said, no, of course I have no courage to tell him. <laughs> and, you know, he says, okay, write him a letter. So I write President Mandela a letter. I hear from the minister, you want me to be ambassador. Please, uh, Mr. President, find somebody else. I mean, send me somewhere else, but not to New York. Of course, the letter goes to the president, and it's on Thursday. And the minister comes back to me on Friday morning and said, by the way, here's your ticket. You are leaving tomorrow on Saturday. <laughs> and, you know, I said, but, but, uh, but he says, no, 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 your family and everything, they'll come after what you go to New York. That was in 99, 1999. And I've been stuck here in New York ever since. <laughs> and, and I have a feeling now they forgot me, you know, because... <laughs> but let me just close about the United Nations, because, you know, you as the people of the United States maybe do not realize one of the greatest contributions you made to the world. I mean, I know Americans are not popular today. Nobody likes Americans, and there are good reasons. And, you know, so don't get too... But there are things that they, this country has done very well, which we'll always remember you for. When this country helped found the United Nations, it was one of the finest moments of this country. Because for whatever reason that the United States joined to found the United Nations, you gave us an organization that over time has become the only truly global organization in the world. Let me give you a case in point. I mean, I can't tell you how proud I was to work in the United Nations. When the tsunami happened, you know, the tsunami happened after Christmas or something. And I was way out in Arizona trying to find a vacation. And here's a story about the tsunami which has wiped out, you know, the people in Indonesia and everywhere. If you watch the stupid uh, TV programs you have, like CNN and others, you know, the tsunami only happened in Asia. But, you know, I said, no, even with a little science I learned at school, I mean, you know, if the ocean is going to start rising like this, I mean, the waves have to, the, the next continent, it would hit with Africa. I mean, how did these waves suddenly end up in the middle of the ocean? And, you know, it took about eight days. Again, the radio, don't forget the radio. I was listening to National Public Radio. One very enterprising journalist was somewhere on the coast of Somalia talking to a group of villagers who half the village was lost to the tsunami because the tsunami was not a tragedy for Asia. The tsunami was a tragedy for the whole world. And he was reporting that right there in the villages in, in, in Somaliland was someone from the United Nations who was doing that. And it made me feel very proud that I'm working for this organization that can be in the most remote corners of the world where people are in need. Of course, the United Nations right now, like I said, we're in a fight here. We are fighting because now we have a view in the world of those who say the United Nations should be about security. We're all afraid now because of what has happened since September 11 and what have you. But I think sometimes we've let our fears really come over even common sense on some things. Now we want everything to be security first. And, you know, we forget about life. You know, there are poor people there. There are sick people out there. These are the people you have to help. At some point in your life, you may say, you know, I'm only 25 years old. Why should I care? I need a job after I live here. But at some point, you get old like I am. You look back and you say, really, what is it? that I can contribute to this world, to make this a better world. And I am very proud to work for an organization like the United Nations. It's not perfect. It's not a corporation. So if you came and saw how we do business, you'd be so frustrated. You'd say, these people, where do they come from? But you know what? It's because this is the center of where all humanity comes together. And even little South Africa, that was one time a subject of this United Nations 
can today try and 